to make a very stand for the song of life. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stand for the sick and handicapped departure of our community, especially uh, Mr. Schneider. Minute of silence, please. Thank you. Roll call, please.
Um, I don't know if the house, the dilapidated house that hasn't been lived in in 14 years on 668 Baldwin Street is included in that. I know that there was an issue with, with that property that's now um, where, you know, salvaged cars are. Um, and I know he had an issue with getting a fence put up there because it's hard to put a fence in a front yard. Well, if he had if he had a legal case that said that that's now a salvage yard, I don't understand why the borough didn't just allow him to put the fence up. I mean, it's like we're, we're fighting at odds here about keeping a decent a decent neighborhood, a decent community um, for for my family, for everyone else's family. Um, and so you had said you'd find out if he was grandfathered from following the existing laws. Or having the question posed was with regard to the establishment. I understood the South and business was place of business, and that is subject to a consent order. That the consent order is for that one property, not the entire right. area. Um, okay, so if you have other issues that you wish to have reviewed, I can put them through Lori, the manager's office, and we will look at them. And well, I, we discussed this. I when I addressed council several months ago and you said you were looking into it. If that's not the case, then we will pursue other avenues. Um, I'd like to know from council who inspects properties and dwellings to determine if they should be um, remediated, fixed, or condemned. Who, who, who's, who's responsibility is that in the room? I can answer to that. When we have a home that structurally is unsound, um, such as, as the home, and there's I have an example at 781 Dollar Hill Road. Mm -hmm. um, we have our building inspector inspect that building, um, note that it's structurally, structurally unsound and unsafe. Um, it is then condemned. Um, we then work to try to take it down. Um, we have been working with the, it is bank owned, so we have been working with the bank to try to take that down. We just are in the midst of applying for a CDBG grant. Um, year 42 to uh, um, uh, obtain money from the Allegheny County Economic Development um, to take that structure down. Um, right now, we're in the midst of uh, 157 Union Street. We obtained grant monies um, for that structure that was abandoned and uh, have, have the clearances to take that structure down. And I appreciate that, but that's that's not my question. If, if, but let's say I decided to no longer maintain my property. If I allowed my property to fall into disrepair and I allowed garbage to collect and I was not following the the borough laws, codes, ordinances based on, you know, having a decent non-nuisance property that's fit for human habitation. If I decided to not do that, who would come to my house to tell me I needed to, to remediate that situation? What we do is is if we have a, a home that is a nuisance home, mm -hmm. of which we have many. Yes. Some are at the magistrate. Some have been at the magistrate for two years. Some have been at the magistrate and they're continued, and then they're continued again, and they're continued again, and again, and again. And opportunities are given to the property owners many times over to remediate them. I was just at the magistrate this week with a property that was continued three times. It's finally remediated. Um, we send letters, we send final letters, then we send them to the magistrate. I have a hearing tomorrow with a property that I sent six months ago on Liberty Street. That is, we're finally having a hearing. So we send letters, uh, most of the time we get those letters back because what we have is we have uh, landlords that do not want to take care of the properties that ignore our letters mm -hmm. and finally go to the magistrate. The magistrate <coughs> usually has to send a constable and they usually have to bring them in and then we have a hearing. It's a long process. It's not that we're not looking at these properties. I have some properties that have garbage in their, in their driveways or garbage around the house or those type things where I'll send a letter, they'll contact me and they'll say, we're taking care of it. A tree that should come down, um, dogs barking, those types of things mm -hmm. that are easy. And then we have the harder ones to where, just like 1306, uh, Cook School Road. That house sat there for five years yeah. and we fought and fought and fought about that house until finally we got something done. Um, so, And we appreciate that. We really <laughs> yeah. The whole yeah. neighborhood really appreciate it. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. glad that that house was rehabbed and someone's living in it. Right. And they yeah. tried where they can't even, you know, on the Bargo Road one, I know you tried because there's two avenues largely to go with them is you know, mm -hmm. try to share so that those are the takers. Right. There's a mortgage on that house that people can live in. So, um, you know, so my fear is that it's, you know, it's in, in T 
terrible disrepair. So that, that is our next one that we're going to get in clearances to take it down. And then what happens is we have to lean that property for the monies that we get from Elegant County Economic Development, which makes it harder for someone to else to come in and say, okay, I want to take this property over. Um, because as far as the borough goes, we'll work with anyone as far as taxes and those things go. Mm -hmm. but as far as the, the things that we have to lean, um, you know, some of those things can be $10,000. We have some homes that are um, condemned. Um, we just condemned for the second time a home on Union Street that has a $42,000 um, uh, price tag yeah, on it. Right. <coughs> taxes and mortgages. Right, know. right. Maybe. And and it's a actually not in bad shape, but you have um, you have people that are coming in there, living in there, starting fires. That's oh, I, I understand completely. Now, in, in, of those structures, of those buildings that are currently under borough request to, to mm -hmm. repair, clean up. Um, are any of those in the Mill Street, Baldwin Street, the Lachlan Run Corridor? I mean, these, this, this area of my neighborhood, for, I, mean, I know it's only two blocks down from my, my neighborhood, but it's still, as far as I'm concerned, part of yeah. my neighborhood. I think the closest one to you that I have right now is 781 Bonner Hill Road. Um, we've got um, 1235 Union Street. We've got 157 Union, we've had 173 Union, that was just bought and someone is re redoing that one. Um, we have uh, the, the home at the corner of Baldwin Street was mm -hmm. condemned. Right. And then the owner brought it up to just, just to where, building. Yeah, he brought it up just to where we couldn't do anything with it. Now it's in disrepair again. I was just looking at it today. There's a graffiti on the door, that type of thing. I spoke with him about a month ago about that property. He said that uh, there have been fires, there have been people inside, there's no copper, it would require a lot of work. He would originally wanted to change that building from a two-apartment um, two rental mm -hmm. to a business, but the zoning, uh, the zoning laws would make it so that he couldn't do that because he didn't have enough parking. So that building's sitting there empty, and Mr. Biden really would be foolish to put any money into that property. Right. But that lot on the side is being used for vehicles that have expired tags. So I guess we're playing the, the past the past, we're passing the ball here, passing the buck about what's happening with the properties at the end of Mill Street and at 668 Baldwin and the hobby shop that's sitting empty. That's been empty for a very long time. Yeah. And the vacant buildings. Oh, Appreciate you. Let me interject something. The vacant buildings. You know, there's there's two levels of condemnation. Okay. Right? And folks, as much as you'd like to take down a building that's abandoned like that structure, for example, there are, there's there's on the thing she's talking about. Even with owner occupied stuff, where it's either weeds or grass or garbage, you can chase people around and stuff and enforce that against owner occupied structures. Um, but when you get into abandoned places where it's either commercial abandoned or owner abandoned, it's jacked up with taxes and liens and, and the whole nine yards. The problem there is that there's that you constitutionally, even if it's not, there's two levels, I call them demo worthy, you know, and uninhabitable worthy. There's two levels, everybody calls it condemnation, but there's really two different things. If a, if a building is not worthy of living, for example, in a, the example you just gave, suppose that building structurally the engineer cannot certify that it's a danger to fall down and da-da. Mm -hmm. You can't get it done. You can get an order buttoned up so that they have to, they can't occupy, you have to board up the windows, which is not a pleasant looking thing either. But you don't actually, we don't have a constitutional power to order the demolition of a building that's not structurally inside. You can make them not occupied and you can button it up, but you don't have the constitutional right to tear it down. You have to prove that it's actually Demolition work. And as the hobby shop, that's the law. The, the hobby shop, as an example, um, we, uh, the building inspector and I had addressed issues with the hobby shop. So what they did was the issues that he had addressed and I had addressed, they addressed them. So now, even though someone may not like what it looks like, we don't have the right. Want. They're technically compliant. So you might not like <coughs> the way it looks, but they're technically compliant. Now some of those, so, I'm sorry. Amy. Some of the, they're, they're tough ones, and, and uh, you know, we, we do a lot of them. You go back and forth between trying to use the property maintenance code and those ordinances, and those enforcement mechanisms, or sheriff sales. Yeah, and then there's a lot of between the both of them. Mm -hmm. Because they're not, like, you, 
Fargo. She tried to get that to sell. It wouldn't sell because it wasn't sale work. It was sale work. You know, she had to the demolition work. You know, it for that. And that's a good, that building is a substantial building. That Some of these buildings, you may, you may be able to get a contract to take those down for six, eight grand or so. Mm -hmm. okay? Some of these more substantial buildings, the borough, as much as you, it'd be nice to be able to take them all down, but without the grant money, you don't have it within your budget to take I spending agree completely, and I think that's thousand dollars to take these buildings down. So that's kind of the well, that, we're all in agreement with that. Yeah, that that's true, and we should we shouldn't let things get to the point where a building needs to be condemned. I mean, we all are trying to keep our properties, you know, in decent shape so that you know well, that we continue to have property value. But there are properties in the neighborhood. I mean, if, if it's selective enforcement, and if, and if someone's not going to be grandfathered. Then we need to have some. We need to have the borough inspector, the, the Mr. Mr. Um, Sites, if it is, to go and, and look at six six Baldwin, six six eight Baldwin. I am um, Fred Sapp. Fred Sapp is our building inspector. I was I wasn't sure. I've never had anyone visit my home to check my home because it's in good repair. Um, okay, so well, Mr. Sapp or whoever, um, you know, I, and, and I, I have to tell you, I'm. <laughs> I'm really disgusted at the current situation. But two weeks ago, on a Friday, I was driving from my house down Mill Street. No one else in the car but me. I was headed towards Aldi to grab a few things from the store. And had I had somebody else in the car, there would have been a picture. But I saw a very large rodent scoop from where Galavici's used to live, Mr. Galavici's old house that used to live in on, on, on Mill Street, across to where Tutu is. And it wasn't a mouse, it wasn't a chipmunk, it wasn't some type of, I mean, I know, I know what animals look like. And it was definitely a very large rodent. And it really, really freaked me out because it was still daylight. And, you know, th there's no reason for large rodents like that, for any rodent to be out during the daytime, um, that, that signifies a problem. And I, so I, I did I talk to the mayor about this and, um, I said, I don't know, and I went down and I talked to the nice couple that's rehabbing 666 Baldwin, and um, they said, I mean, they've got it that place, they've got it down to, down to studs. They're putting a lot of money into that, a lot of work, and they said that they're, they told me that there is a rat problem on Baldwin Street. And then following up with the mayor, he told me that with the last rain, which wasn't even a substantial rain, and the creek beds did not overflow, there was no rushing water anywhere, that there was sewage coming up inside the, some of the buildings and, and homes on Baldwin Street. So even without a major rain event, we've got sewage problems and there's, and, there's, and there's an issue with rodents in that area. So we've got buildings that are full of garbage, we've got things that need to be cleaned up, we've got vehicles that haven't moved in, in eight, 10 years. And you know, I don't know what the, I don't know if the county's gonna come in and help with any of that. I know I remember for a fact being at a meeting where um, Lori explained that you know, the sewers were cleaned and flushed, and then and then at another point they were they were full of debris again, and that that was going to be an ongoing thing that we were going to make sure that the sewers were clean on Baldwin Street. Can I, can I make a note of that? Sure. I mean, we we can clean the sewers on Baldwin Street, um, and it is on our maintenance schedule yearly. The homes that got water on Baldwin Street in their basements, and I think the the uh, fire chief can attest to this, are the homes that do not have backflow preventers in, in their basements. Um, the homes that were right next door to each other that had backflow preventers in their basements did not get any water in their homes. On the drive. Correct. On drive. Not anything in it, and houses on each side had sewage so in it. So it's normal for, for sewage to want to backflow into properties even when there is When you're in a floodplain? Yes, because you're in a floodplain and if you don't have that backflow preventer in there, and at one point in time, years, years, years ago, they were down there. But it's called maintenance. And people that live there don't maintain them. So the people who don't have backflow preventers? They're, they're asking for problems because you know when the water comes out, it's going to fill the sewer up because it's, it's, it's their it's their it issue. To make it's their sure issue. Sewage doesn't come into their building. Yeah. It's 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 their 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 yes. 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 Many of those folks also have um, terracotta laterals that are like sits as well. And then they got pumps. It's actually not of that neighborhood. That's kind of a century, you know, plumbing issue in the whole borough and county. That's part of the whole 
larger sanitation. Yeah, I understand that, and Mr. I'm, McDermott, but that's two blocks away from my yeah. home. Here's the, yeah. All of the all of the sewers in this We have the same problem up on Byer Road. Yeah. There's the same problem on Byer Road. Just go put a backflip preventer in to stop that from going into your house. You know, there is stuff for people to do and to am protect I their property. Back, yeah. Am I going to need a backflip preventer no. now that no. there's additional sewers coming from Upper St. Clair? No. No, you're missing the point. It's just not that. It's all the water that's coming down. It's in the creek. And let me take a, let, let me. And I think I find this extremely disturbing. There's a rental property on Baldwin Street that has a shutoff valve, but they say they really don't feel like going down and turning it off when it's raining. So they want us to put a backflow for in there. So they are not taking responsibility. If, it, if I lived on Baldwin Street and I was getting water in my basement and I needed to put a backflow preventer in, I would do that so that I didn't get water in my basement. But in the, in the 13 years that my husband and I have lived in our home, there have been the, the sewage backups in the homes has crept up Bower Hill to where it's the last time there was water coming up and sewage coming up, it was on Bower Hill Road and our neighbors who were across the alley from us. You know, with all of this increased sewage and all of these increased problems, at what point are we going to be alerted that we have to have some kind of backflow or we're going to have sewage in our basement? I mean, is that a little You can be problem? proactive and put one in. So, the, so if there's sewage that comes up, the borough is not responsible for the sewage flow that's that's continuing. I don't know on that, but I mean, as a homeowner, if I want to put one in. I don't understand why anybody wants to continue to live in this community. And I love my neighbors. I love my home. I, I, I think the school district is great. But the fact that we have an issue with sewage, now we have an issue with rodents. There's garbage that's never cleaned up. And the fact that the borough has to, has to try to shame people into doing this. And Mr. Pelosi owns a property on Baldwin Street. I walk past it all the time. It's very clean and very decent looking from the outside. There's a lot of cinder blocks and a lot of vehicles, but there's no garbage, there's no debris. You know, there's, there's no, nothing littering his front, his front door. He sits on council. You have Mr. Gallagher's place. You know, we, we're gonna, are the Wait, police. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Where is, where is garbage in our place? It's very clean. The house on Baldwin Street is sealed up. It's clean. I don't know where you're. I, I don't there understand is what you're. and garbage and weeds on where? vehicles on Mill Street that have not moved in years. You're full of it. I am not full of it. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. That's, that's okay. your. your, your I well, you know what? Then I will call the county and I will ask the county to enforce the laws and ordinances that are on the borough books. Sure have the you gone up the alley place. and saw all the vehicles that are sitting up at the alley? How about over at Andy's over there? Do you say anything about that? No, you don't say anything about that. You talk about the Gallarducci's. Like they're demons themselves. I've never seen garbage. Oh, well, you know place. what? You're talking about abandoned vehicles. What about the ones over there up the alley? That guy up the alley that has all these vehicles. About it? No, I'm not going to complain about it. Please. Thank you. You're the one that's doing a complaint. Okay, I don't want garbage around my neighborhood. Okay, well then don't move down that way. Stay up at that end. Apparently you're right. Uh, next, Melissa. Yeah, I'm moving up to your place. 428 Shady Avenue. Hi, my name is Melissa Rocco. Um, this is my very first council meeting. Oh, okay. Thank you. I live on Shady Avenue, and I have a quick question. I was wondering if it was possible, this is in the future, I wanted to have a graduation party for my sons, and I was going, I was thinking about asking the borough if I would be permitted if I would close the street down for like five to seven hours on a Saturday, kind of like a block party, but I want to have a graduation party for my son on the street that we live on. I did talk to a few of my neighbors. I talked to a business owner who lives on the street, and so far everyone is willing to agree to it. Well, I think I think there are two people you should talk to, the mayor and the chief. And okay. they'll, <laughs> those are the two people they really good okay. to make it happen or not make it happen. More likely, they're going to make it happen. This is like in the future, future, but I didn't know like if I if I could do that, like what the process is, what I would do. Yeah. Why for permit? Yeah. Okay. That's police office. Mm -hmm. And then it comes before me and I'm going to prove it. It's reasonable. Okay. I can tell you that what I look for is that it is a block party. Your neighbors are there. Or Part of it, right? Not then simply you're using the street for a graduation party, right? 
That's the difference. You gotcha. Okay? That's the difference. <laughs> so it, block parties, I'm, I'm you know, block parties are a great thing in this community. It is amazing. And you know, I was up at one this weekend. It is really what makes this community great. So I would encourage you to actually have a block party. Okay. That's right. Okay. Block okay. party. That's right. <laughs> okay, thank you. Those two, they're the one that could make this happen. <laughs> uh, okay. Visitors, you got it. Uh, okay. A motion to the Board of Council regards the minutes of September 14, 2015, workshop meeting as submitted. I need a motion. I need a motion. Uh, Jason and second bill. Everybody in favor? I'm saying I wasn't at it. Okay, thank you, sir. Anybody in favor? Aye. Don't give any more to call, huh? This is it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A motion to the Board of Council regards the mint of September 14, 2015, regular meeting as submitted. I need a motion. Jason. And the others. Okay, Lori. Your accent gets way better than mine. How about to read the rest? Okay, the first item on the agenda is the Kelly Radzik subdivision consolidation uh, application for President Drive. This subdivision consolidation application, dated August 6, 2015, was prepared by Richard Kastner and submitted on behalf of Sheila Kelly and Richard and Susan Bradsick for the properties located at 1348 and 1352 Pesadena Drive. The properties are located in the R1 single family residential district, 0.0324 acres, 1,411.78 square feet, is to be conveyed from lot 53R to lot 27 R. And I've attached the lots so that you can review them. The purpose of the subdivision and consolidation is due to the close proximity of the home at 1352 Pennsylvania Drive and the encroaching landscaping. No new lots are being created by the subdivision consolidation. The plan has been reviewed for conformance to our ordinances by engineer sites. It has been recommended for the consideration of council by the planning commission. I need a motion. So move. Second. Bruce and uh, Jason. Everybody in favor? Aye. Because motion care. Next solid waste. <laughs> okay, the next item that I have is a solid waste and recyclable collection. Sylvia's was received and publicly opened on Friday, October 2nd, 2015 at 10 a.m. for the following good results with the options of garbage and recycling with an unlimited weekly collection. And another option of garbage garbage and recycling with unlimited weekly collections, including the household waste and e-waste programs, which are currently in place. So we've, we've been two different uh, bids, um, and uh, as I said, the HHW and e-waste program is in place now. As far as the unweekly limited garbage and recycling, the cost per meeting year. 2016 waste management, 17484, ally 189, valley waste 20592. 2017, 17664 waste management, 195, allied waste 210, valley waste. 2018, 1812 waste management, 201, allied waste 214, valley waste. Option year 2019, 18552 waste management, 207, allied waste 218, valley waste. In option year 2020, 192.96 for waste management, 213 for allied waste, and 222.72 for valid waste. Now, with the unlimited weekly garbage and recycling, including the household waste and the e waste programs, 2016 waste management 187.20, allied waste 201, valid waste no bid. 2017 waste management 189.12, allied waste 207, valid waste no bid. 2018, waste management 192.96, allied waste 213, valid waste no good. Option year 2019, 198.72, allied waste 219, valid waste no good. And option year 2020, 
Waste Management 206 is before Allied Waste 225 and Valley Waste no bid. So what this motion would be, if Council so chooses, is to award the bid for the solid waste and recycling contract with or without the inclusion of the household waste and e-waste program to the lowest responsible bidder. And you can take the three contract years, 2016, 17, and 18, but you can also option for the years 2019 and 2020. So those have been left to your discretion. And all, all of these items will be provided to solicitor to solicitor and down before these review. Okay, what are we gonna do here, Mr. Mayor? We are gonna ask for remark we we'll ask for motion. We'll ask for remarks at that time, if it's proper. At that time, on the remarks, we'll make all the remarks, and uh, it could be table, it could be whatever. Or don't make no motion at all, and ask for the remarks before, I will let that to the solicitor to recommend me that. That's a good because they are, they are people who want to talk about it, and that's how I know. Whatever it's easier, and whatever it's legal, either way it's legal. You can do it either way. You can open up for discussion versus. Well, let's discussion. open for discussion now, and then we'll do the motion. My question to our manager was the difference between the unlimited weekly garbage and recycling, including the household waste and e waste programs. If you went with the other one, that would leave you with. Uh, a, a, an empty spot, you, you have to collect recyclables, right? Right, what we would have to do would be, we would have to have at least a, uh, at least a few times a year, a few times a year, we have to have an e-waste type program here. Mm -hmm. We have we have to have a, uh, some type of household waste program um, for our residents. So um, right now we have been providing that we're provided with a report every year regarding that, and it's very interesting because I was interested to see if they were using it, if it was actually worth it to have it. I actually get a card from uh, when, when they're scheduled, um, waste management gives them a card, and, and they write, you know, was it satisfactory, how do you feel about this program, that type of thing. And I've gotten many satisfactory, um, everyone loves it because you know, they've had paint in their house for 20 years, they have televisions, they've had those type of things. But I can say this year they've taken probably at least 2,000 televisions alone, um, computers, um, gallons and gallons of paint, mm -hmm. so they are using it. Um, my fear would be that um, once you provide a service, um, if you take it away, it, it pays a little bit. for a second. I wasn't focused on the e-waste. Yeah. I was focused on the recycling. Oh, recycling? In other words, this, these two differentiations we, we also gets rid of the recycling. We, no. No? No. 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 The top is Both garbage them. and recycling. Okay, so this bottom is only the household. Right. It would, what it, it, we're required to recycle since we're right. a municipality over 3,000 individuals. Yes. So it's unlimited garbage and recycling weekly. The only difference is the household waste and e-waste is included in the second bid. Right. So here's what it comes down to then. So, I still don't understand what household waste. Household waste is hazardous. Hazardous household, hazardous. Hazardous. Hazardous household waste. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. Thank yes. you. Right. So now it's TV. Television and paint. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then other things. Yeah. So what that means is that the residents were essentially going to pay um, 180 dollars $13. $13 a year. Each household is going to pay $13 a year for an unlimited amount of TVs and paints and whatever else they want to get rid of. Right. Okay. Yes. Well, the other deal is to do what I percent credit does, which is every month or so, you go down to their municipal building, they got trucks down there, and people deliver their TVs and their paint and whatever they want to deliver. I don't know what their charge is, but is it five? Well, they're not to deliver it down to Upper St. Clair. It is. When we were down there, they didn't charge anything. They even took us. Okay. <laughs> I can tell you when we went down two weeks ago, they didn't charge anything. But the point is that I'm sure Upper St. Clair is paying something. Yeah. Upper St. Clair. We would have to pay some. As far as if we did that, then we, yeah. we would have to. 
the borough bridge road would have to pay to take those items to the recyclers, mm -hmm. um, of which would then be passed on to our residents anyway. Right, because that's the first big question for council is, do you want to pay that extra $13 a year? Yeah, good. It's, it's a good service for $13 a year, okay? I think the, the, uh, the people of Bridgeville are very happy to have their service. We take it away in the service for, uh, I don't see where you're going to get that free uh, from Upper St. Clair, you're, you're going to pay anyway. Is it $5? $5? If you were not a resident, you would pay the charge $5. You have to take one. Yes. Is it, is it worth the $7? I mean, uh, is it worth $13? I think so. I haven't used the service, but it would be. Well, you can't put it in. For those big TVs. Hey, that's right. It's worth $13 a year. Yeah. What happened about, so? about a year ago, it became illegal to put e waste right. in, in a landfill right. and therefore out to the curb. And for a while, everybody thought we were all going to be scrambling and running out to the Best Buy with everything, where, where you can take your TV but not your pen key. Now, the waste haulers have reintroduced that service as a convenience back to you. They're not taking this stuff to a landfill, they're taking this stuff to another place. So if you have everything from paint to TVs and computers dropped off at the borough building, then the borough building is going to be the ones who have to go take that to wherever the heck these guys take it at a cost to you that will become part of your general tax obligation. Yeah. So it's, either, it's either here in the bid or it will be reflected, uh, it will be reflected in, in, your, in the... Uh, in the quarterly rate because we will still have pay to pay now or pay later. Right. Anymore. I had a, I had one property every one of us I had a, one of those real monster big TV guns there. And obviously time went bad. And I called the people oh sorry. I called the people and uh, I said I'll take them on the curb but no no don't don't do that. Just open the door for us. They come in, they take it I just look at it. $13 a year in paint and everything. I personally, as a resident of Bridgeville, I personally think that's, that's a good deal. I've used the service and I think it's great. Yeah. I can honestly yeah, say it's great. We, we live in Cecil Township and I've, got, I've had a TV sitting in my bedroom for probably six months because we don't have that, any type of service like that. So when you don't, you, you realize how much you can use it when you have those types of things. So. See, to take something good away from the resident for $13, that's like a crime. I don't know what that bad. There's another advantage to this. Because there's no, no extra cost to the residents and no, extra, no real hassle, they probably, I know, call to say here's the paint instead of trying to sneak it in and so I think there's a great benefit from this but we wanted to bring it on the table. Right now, to, um, just to, I'm, so, I'm sorry that I interrupted you, right now for 2016 the price that they gave us is $5,000 less than the price that we're paying right now for the service. And I know it goes up every year but just as a note, um, but the bids came in lower than we're paying right now. They came in lower than what we're paying right now. Yeah. That's because they heard that council was going to, and the manager, <laughs> the mayor, we're going to collect the garbage ourselves. <laughs> hey, we're going to pay the money. We've got to be competitive. <laughs> it comes less than less than the less the less year. Yes. So speaking of which, do you want to? Talk about that at all? Well, the only thing I'd still like to get around the trucks, but uh, I think if we get a one year contract and fill this out, because we could save, you got all the figures, what we could save right now and a lot bigger. Let me take 30 seconds, maybe 45, real quick, and we'll run through this. Because um, uh, yeah. we're, we're both. Pat and I are both in the garbage stand Yeah, we just, Which is really amazing. <laughs> um, Pat and I have have gotten together as far as he's done his calculations and I've done my calculations and, and um, in the beginning he didn't have some of the numbers and I provided those numbers to him and right now if we take over the garbage within the borough of Bridgeville 
at this time with an estimate, and, and this, this is an estimate of the tipping fees because, of course, the tipping fees, you never know what they're going to be in, and they can go up, and also the amount of garbage that you have within the municipality. We averaged it uh, over a three-year period. It's 2,438.84 tons, which is a lot. And right now, the uh, it comes out to about 250 pounds per household per month, which is a lot of a lot of garbage. It's a lot of garbage. So we calculated, um, you know, purchasing the truck, um, uh, had to the tenure life of the truck, the capital cost, the repairs, full-time employees, um, pension, payroll taxes. I mean, we calculated everything that we could calculate to see if we would be saving you money or not. Um, Pat and I are pretty close. As far as he calculated two and a half employees, I calculated three employees. So take into consideration where you put the garbage in. Maybe. Well, we're going to have to, that's we're going to, have to pay tipping fees, okay. and, exactly. and that's estimated at the lowest tipping fee that we have. So um, my calculation was that we would be losing, and in the red, $48,368. Pat's calculation is that we would be saving $31,324. And the swing there is two and a half people versus three. Yeah. And Bill, that you and Bruce were having that same discussion. Can you deal with two and a half people or do you need three? And joking around a little bit, if all seven members of council and the manager and the mayor all pick up a little bit, we could probably do it with two people. And that's beyond the. <laughs> and that's nowhere set in stone. That's not to be signed. 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 Yeah, we have three waste management trucks that are in here on a Monday, and one of them, we believe, dumps at least twice. So um, it would be all week of picking up garbage plus recycling, and we believe that we probably would need more than three people, probably four, to make it work because you're not always going to have everybody here. And right now we have a staff of gentlemen, the, the youngest gentleman we have on staff right now is, well, we have a mechanic, and then the youngest is my age, which is 57. So um, picking up couches and furniture, and so those type of things would be pretty tough. So what what I'm recommending, and I know Bill's not happy with me, but I feel that it would be much more cost effective if we went with the, with the uh, bid from waste management, and at least a three-year contract. I mean, you don't have to take the two options, but at least a three-year contract. Well, you see, South Fayette, they used to have their own, not anymore. They, they discontinued because it was better for them to give it to a contractor. And, and what else? I'm, I'm your delegate for the call. There are 21 municipalities that we together, okay? We also, the call, think that someday we're going to be all 21 municipalities together into this. We started working on now. One call we already is doing, no, it's not doing it. Also, they're working on it. And, oh, and we also, it's too early, I think. It's a good idea. Bill has a very good idea. But we got three years, really, to put this in place. Penny by penny. And yeah. If it's good for you, for us, then we'll do it. I. I don't know. I mean, we really calculated to see because we don't want to cost you more money. But then again, we won't, don't want to do something that is going to end up costing more money mm -hmm. and more manpower. And, uh, and you know, right now we have someone off, so we have four people in public works right now. That's it. So if you had someone call, call up, it's just not cost effective for us at this time, maybe later. We can take a look at it again, but these bids are, as far as the bids go, they're pretty good bids, um, and they give us they give us pretty good service.
they miss sometimes, but they get a pretty good service and we've got a good program. So. Yeah. And we can't we can't do a one year contract. We have to do a minimum of three. Correct. Yeah, I thought you told me you could do one. No, I didn't. Well, we advertised that way, and uh, we and gave the option year after I took a look at it. Uh, I advertised it in 16, 17, and 18. There's two options. <coughs> we don't have to take the option year 19 or 20. So obviously, I'm correct. So, do you have to take those option years now? No. You have those option years in three we, years. We, what we what we did last yes. last time is we took three years. We did not take the option years of four mm -hmm. and five. Now when we get to the when we get to four and five, if you decide you want to take those option years, then am I incorrect in saying that we can do so? Yeah, that for reasons of reasons of contract. Generally speaking, that's not Right, but we did not take take the option years last time, so that's why the bid came up again. We only did a three year. And which which was actually advantageous to us because they came back lower than they were mm -hmm. um, prior to that. But um, we had to take we would have to take the three years and then the two option years. Um, we can take a look at that later down the road. Is there a fuel escalator in here? In the contract and the bid? Yes. Okay. <coughs> well these days in the US. Well, the idea yes, that, was my, that was my next question. But yes, and we never, and they, and even when the fuel was, even when the fuel was mm -hmm. at higher rates, they, they never charged us. Our, our rates always stayed the same. I was wondering about that. Yeah. They always charged I think just when, those, uh, just when they were successful in getting those into these agreements, the, the prices of the oil kind of fell off. Right when they bought the clause, they needed to more mm -hmm. the paper dollars. But it'll come back. Yeah, I mean, it'll come back. Let's be very careful that our base is not skewed. You know what I'm saying? They may have put a, our current price of per gallon as a base. Yeah. You people don't, don't know what I'm thinking. I'm looking six years yet. I just turned 81 a couple of days ago. Chris, I don't know. What the hell am I going to be six years from now? Do any of us? Do any of us? But I understand that. <laughs> we, also, um, we also look a bit into the varying methods. Uh, because North Fayette does this. Mm -hmm. North Fayette picks up their own garbage, they have their own trucks, and they also use a side loading truck with a one man operation and a front loading truck with a one man operation. But they also don't have the narrowness of the streets. Right. And the density of the population. And yeah. and another right. thing that they don't do is oh, right now you can put out a you can put out a house, you can put out a bed, you can put out whatever. You can't do that there. You have to go to the borough building, you have to pay a twenty dollar fee or whatever. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have to put a sticker on it and then they send an additional truck. So um, you know, it, it sounds like it might work and then and they don't have any type of um, you know, they don't have any waste in the household. And in addition to that, and I also serve in North Bank Township, and then in fact, Lori and I are going to consult mm -hmm. for the next yeah, phase with that. Yes, but appreciate too, the it's, they're the exception to the rule. They're the ones that have been one for a long time. Oh, okay. The infrastructure, even the thing you talked about, that's kind of a recent evolution. <coughs> but they have the, they already have the personnel apparatus the main, and the equipment. And they build their DPW facilities around it because they've always done it. That's easier to continue than it is to start. Or, or so, but having said that, we are going to, in the long run, sure. talk. I, to I would suggest that yeah. like, this makes sense. It makes sense to look at it now. Mm -hmm. If you feel that you need to look to talk to North Fayette and do more research, I would suggest that you table. You have awarding this contract until the November meeting so that you could do your research. It doesn't make sense to do research after the fact after you've awarded a three year contract. I think what we're talking about is future strategic planning. planning. So Having yeah. said that we agree with the consensus. Well, yeah. yeah, there's agreement consensus about the conclusions you've reached with regard to this contract cycle. However, we want to close the topic forever. And we'll continue to learn and see what we can do as we evolve. I think uh, I think from the top of my mind that uh, 
to clean all these questions. It's still not enough. At this time, I will ask for a motion to keep this contract to the lowest paid, who is West Management for three years. Uh, including and also always. You waste, yeah. It's it's form of motion. I need a motion. How many more? Second, I need second. I'll second. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. We're not that many. Jason Zarazza. Yes. Bill Politi. Yes. Chris Gallagher. Yes. Can we already decide that to table or scratch it off for now? Well, it's okay, okay with the I guess for protocol, you know, that was one, that was the discussion. Okay, okay. well, let's, let's, let's make the call change. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. That's the problem with it. So this would be a motion to table it
I need a motion. So moved. I need a second. I'll second. Okay, Bruce and uh, Jason, everybody in favor? Okay. Uh, committee report. Administration, Bruce. I have nothing to report to. Any question for administration? Finance. Okay. The general fund, one million seven hundred and eighty eight thousand six hundred and seventy seven dollars and forty cents. Sewer fund, two hundred thousand six hundred and ninety four dollars and eighty eight cents. Garbage fund, forty nine thousand seventy two dollars and forty nine cents. Capital improvement, twenty five thousand hundred sixteen dollars and six cents. Lake of fuel, hundred seventy four thousand three hundred seventy dollar point eighty cents. I need a motion. Oh, I just read. That's right. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I tried to be fancy. My last meeting. <laughs> By the way, before I close my year, uh, I wish that everybody exercise their duty next month to go home. It'd be something good for us wrestling to do that. And that's all I have. Thank you. So, oh, that's more right? Recreation. Yeah, parks and recreation. No report. Thank you. Anything for parks? Public work. Thank you. Anything for public? Public safety. Okay. Uh, Chief, anything? Uh, well, I'll call you on your report. Nope. <laughs> Mayor Pasquale. Halloween parade, the signs are up. <laughs> Trick or treat, October 31st, 6 to 8. 6 to 8. Okay. Anything for the mayor? Police Chief Chet Lee. <coughs> oh, you already told me that. Well, I asked. We gotta go watch the game. So listen, Tom. Go Steelers. Go Steelers. You have my right report. They got a different kick. They got a different kick. Go Steelers. They should call me. I played soccer at one time. We were one of my best two games. At least. <laughs> Okay, we have my report. Okay, engineer, sign. Thank you, President. Um, 2015 Pavement Maintenance El Grandy will be here within the next week and a half to start work and uh, get the uh, program done. Uh, sanitary sewer CCTV clean inspection. We're trying to think to get the 2014 contract wrapped up. The CD42 grant application, as Lori said, we've got an application into the county for the demolition of 781 Bower Hill Road. Once we get the uh, green light on that, we'll complete the uh, full application. Um, the 2015 Sanitary Sewer Operation and Maintenance, uh, we're working with Soul Light Construction on some of the point repairs, and Jet Jack's uh, giving us uh, a schedule for the uh, completion of the lining work uh, for their portion of the project. Uh, the 2015 CCTV with Insight Pipe, we're going through the data that they provided. We'll get that totally uh, uh, cleaned up before the November meeting. And then uh, on Chartier Street, Washington Avenue and Chartier Creek Bridge intersection, uh, nothing new to report on those projects. Uh, since uh, PennDOT has indicated that due to this budget impasse, any funding applications <coughs> have been not uh, given. So, and I received an email today. Uh, there's Pendlock's working on a multimodal uh, grant application. I think that's something we're going to want to submit for one of these projects. And um, I'll talk with my camera and our traffic engineer. And we also got a response on uh, the Bower Hill Road, Washington Avenue. Uh, conceptual plan was submitted. Uh, Pen Pendlock came back and asked that uh, additional studies be done uh, to uh, investigate the timing of the signals and the uh, the length of the uh, the lane. Good. We're nice moving on. on. We're moving on. Yeah, we'll probably have next month for you a uh, ATO as far as what the additional studies will cost. Yeah. Um, so that uh, to see if we can Well, what? Takes moving on. Go ahead. Anything for the engineer? 
Minor, minor, not minor. Not that it's mine to come from me, but go ahead, shoot it. Come on, Dean. Okay, thank you, Pat. Take it, Pat. The situation on Baldwin Street is the result of inflow and infiltration. Do we agree to that? That's true. Are you doing what weather events? During wet weather events, it, does, it is not McLaughlin Run Creek that goes up into these people's basements. That's correct. It is inflow and infiltration. That's correct. Which should not occur. In a perfect world, in a, correct. In a perfect world, in the world I want to live in, it should not occur. Right. Okay? But it does. <clears throat> but it does, it does, and we need to figure out where the inflow and infiltration is coming from. We know we have the feasibility study to build the uh, parallel sewer, a portion of that front pipe, and it's just a matter of uh, getting the funding and uh, implementing it at some point in the future. But, but there's, one, there's one element here that, that uh, you have to realize is that we can do our part in our system, but the Alcacian system downstream doesn't have the capacity to accept that additional flow. That follows the old model of they will accept everything we send. The new model, which we're both aware of, is we need to do source reduction. Right. And we need to do it cooperatively with our neighbors at Upper St. Clair and Bethel Park. That's it's expensive, but it isn't all to blame on the laterals. A good part of it is, but not every piece of it. I believe that somewhere along that sewer line that starts at South Hills Village, that there are some more significant defects. And I think we should try and find them. There's, there is a, there's a project called the Morton Arrow Project that Upper mm -hmm. St. Clair is working on. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, they, they claim that there's a lot of uh, I and I in that portion of the borough or the township up there. And I believe they're in the process of getting that project uh, implemented to uh, have that reduction. So that's only one part of that. I mean, I think we, can look, we need to look for other portions, and uh, we're going to talk about that off one. Okay. okay, thank you. Fire Chief. Thanks, Mr. President, Acting President. A um, couple things. I gave you my list. I wasn't here last month for April's fire calls. I don't have. September because the server was down doing the reports. But I do want to report on one thing with the eight, the August one. Just to let everybody know, we were assisting St. Clair one night on a house fire, and while that was going on, we had a electrical fire for Bridgeville Towers, and just to let everybody know why they didn't see us there is because we were in St. Clair. The neighboring departments assisted us and handled that. I did come back to assist them to make sure everything was taken care of there. So that's what mutual aid is for and coverage. We've done that with other communities too, so just to let everybody know. And the night of the rain we had, just to let everybody know, we handled, we did seven houses on Baldwin Street. The houses we did didn't have pumps or the backflow preventers in them. But the houses that had pumps or the black flow were both were dry. If they had a pump, they kept up with it. It was very, very, very minimal, and we didn't have to do nothing. Um, but the other ones, they've been down there umpteen years. And since I've been in the fire department 30 years, we've been going down there. And we've been going down there before me to handle flooding calls and basement flooding. And my point is, we're volunteers. And Pat, you were there and you said, we're right. down there for free for five hours. We have no problem helping people, but when people don't take the initiative when they know they live in a floodplain to help themselves, you know, it gets tiring on us. You know, one resident, his pump acted up. We had no problem <coughs> helping him in the system. We got ahead and got the water ahead and his pump kicked in and had no problem keeping up there. But it's the other ones that it's every time, as soon as it happens, we know, we can tell you that the address is off by heart, we know where we're going. And it's, it's, it's time that they need to step up and do their part 
to help us because you know you're tying us up and sometimes another department to help this on that night it was a minor ordeal because the amount of water we had was the most in one house was probably maybe two feet at that but you know if they had these in when it started it would have kept up and had no issues and you were down there and seeing that so it's just you know you live in it you got to do your part too and these are people that have been there the whole time. It, it's not unknown to them. No, it is not. And it's time for them to do something to help because you can't keep relying on us to handle it. I mean, we don't mind doing it, don't get me wrong, but it gets old after a while. And it, it, we're at that old point and, you know, we're here to protect the town in that. So if we're tied up there and something else major comes in. It doesn't make any sense. For the couple that we always get every time. Chief, for... For the idea of installing a backflow preventer to keep your basement from becoming flooded with sewage makes a lot of sense. What is going to freeing our fire department and our volunteers to not have to come down and help you. you know, and what it's going to cost yourself. you? Would you just pay an insurance and your insurance to go up because you have flood insurance down there? Mm -hmm. What it's costing you for your increase is probably what it costs to put that backflow preventer in, and they're going to get their money back. That's a I, I, you know, Lori, our, the manager last year, you sent out those letters. I'm not suggesting that the borough should do this for them. That's not my suggestion. But I think we, I think we ought to look at this in much the way we look at a property that's not being kept up as to facilitate. They're putting it in. And we looked at that at the backflow presenter preventers and this as a test case as an exploratory item for looking at laterals. Right. And also, some of these houses, if they want the back poker bear, they don't even have a pump. They don't have either one. And we, we did kind of, sorry, we did, uh, as Corey indicated, I mean, the offer to work with them to accomplish that. But from what we were told, I believe by Joe as well, is that those folks, you can put, if you put a backflow preventer on, but they still have old terracotta or bad laterals, you're basically putting a cap on the end of a straw full of sit, so they're still going to get it because they're getting it both ways. Then they yeah. need to solve both problems. That's right. And they'll never be kind of um, you know, cooperating um, with them in that. But they okay. Need, you know, Whatever it is, we know it's been a year now. This, 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 don't be so. We know this is It's coming. We have a lot more for the coming. Okay. But water. Just make you aware of this. We're going to start storm, storm. When do we start we that? Solutions. Let's and then you're going to get a lot of it. That's, that's right. Let's worry about that. Let's get up here. Okay. That's yeah. all I got, Mr. President. Uh, thank you. Thank you. The infiltration is a lot more yet to, to fix before we we complete that. I had many discussions with Joe. Uh, okay. Uh, we have uh, the Sudbury and Chamber dinner here. Our library. Well, there's nobody here, but I know I see many signs of there since I'm very attached to the library. Uh, they have some uh, uh, Halloween stuff, I believe, so maybe some of you can get a masquerade a suit or something and go there, and I'm sure you have to pay, and, and well, that's what it's all about. So look into it. <laughs> I have a mask on already, so I'll, I'll, I'm ready, I'll be there. Oh, as he said, we will make another one. <laughs> <laughs> we need the money. What's the difference? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, board manager. Um, I didn't provide council over there before I didn't have time to get it done today. There's just a few things. We're working with the Land, uh, land Water Conservation Fund in DCN or regarding the McLaughlin Grant. We did meet it on October 8th regarding the flooding, and we will be giving information to um, to the neighboring communities and then uh, we'll take on the court. I'm working on that. We had a flu shock clinic here on September 29th. 416 Darby Way, the, the home that we purchased next door is empty. Um, all of the tenants are gone, so we're going to uh, to uh, get that uh, tightened up for the winter. Uh, I know we're on the green light go grant because of the uh, lack of budget. Um, KMA, our signage company, I'll be meeting with them this week to go over construction documents. 
Um, we have the PNC yearly meeting regarding the pension um, for the police, uh, no issues there. And uh, we will begin working uh, with the budget and with the finance committee probably this week to um, get started. And that, as a note, battery backups for traffic signals. Mm -hmm. I talked to traffic systems, and uh, they are $280 per head. Four heads are $1,120 per signal. So they are, you are able to put them in. And uh, John Carney from Traffic Systems is going to give me a quote in case council would like to consider that for next year's budget. Okay. So uh, roughly $1,100? $1, uh, $1,120 per signal. Per signal? Yeah. It's for yeah. Four, yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. He Thank said you. PennDOT is requiring them more and more as their operations, so. Yeah. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Any question for the board manager? Old business. New business. I just want to make a comment. Nancy. Please. Um, Nancy and I went to Bartman Homes display on Sunday, and not to us, but there was another woman there, and she was complaining about having to use our Ridge Road and the Cook School Road getting up there to the place where we were. And our salesperson just said, well, any, in, in within a year, at least, she said, they'll be opening Main Street, so you can just zip down there onto Bar Hill Road. <laughs> I don't think it's on the point. It is. The is Thomas it? Builders are going yeah. to be building. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's an old building. Yes. A couple months. Yes, yes, yes. I just thought I'd keep you abreast of that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm sure you say thank you. <laughs> well, he doesn't care. He doesn't no, he doesn't. Yes, I do. That's a matter of opinion, you know. Okay. Uh, I need so a motion. So moved. Any, uh, everybody in favor? Second. Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carried. Journey.